What's up, everyone? I'm Fran Capitanelli, and that's the song Ten Years Gone by Led Zeppelin. One of the most beautiful Led Zeppelin songs and bountiful, with some of the, the best lyrics of any Led Zeppelin song. But the guitar work is really the, the master at work. There's so many layers. It's the perfect example of the Jimmy Page layering of guitars that we love so much. But before I get started, I want to thank everyone for the killer response from the video I put out last week, the last video I put out, the huge bump up in subscribers. That was really awesome and I can't thank you enough. So we're at about 600 and I got 400 to go. Meanwhile, so in 1990, when the uh, first Led Zeppelin box set came out, I started seeing a bunch of new stuff on MTV and 10 Years Gone from Nebworth was one of the videos that they were pumping up for this box set. I noticed that there was this bending going on in the song that I didn't remember from the album version. I couldn't figure out how he was doing it. But uh, I didn't give up. So I didn't know that a B bender even existed, but I could hear that there was a bend going on in the beginning of the song. I found the bend on the guitar, but you just couldn't play that A chord and do the bend at the same time. So I tuned the guitar down, the B string down, to an A. And then I was able to do it with my pinky. See that? I couldn't play the rest of the song. It just screwed everything up. I got to certain positions on the guitar. It didn't look like what he was doing. It was years later when I got a B bender that I realized, okay, that's what's going on there. So as soon as I got the B bender and I tried to play it, it was all right there, just waiting for me to discover and learn the rest of the song. And basically, you're playing an A chord with an open B string. And it opened up so many other doors in the rest of the song to put this little flare in there. It's also in drop D. So your low E string goes to a D. And it became one of my favorite songs to look for the live version of it from different bootlegs. On the live version, John Paul Jones, he plays the acoustic guitar. And I guess at one of these shows where they were doing the song, a luthier was there, Andy Manson. And he saw that during this song, John Paul Jones, he would pick up the six string acoustic, then he would go to a 12 string acoustic, and then to a mandolin. And he decided to make John Paul Jones the three necked guitar that many of you are familiar with and seen him play a bunch. Perfect for the opulence of Led Zeppelin at the time. You have to have a three necked acoustic guitar. But the chords after that part are really beautiful. There's a lot of major seven chords in this song, which are like very majestic and beautiful sounding chords and some, some minor sevens. And it's just put together really well before the riff comes in. So you can 
play that on any guitar, but then when you add the B bender in, and the vocals start up. It goes around a few times before the drums kick in. The solo in this song is the classic page solo. But the live version, since he's got the B bender on, he does all these other cool little flares in there and he mixes up the solo as he normally does on the live version. It adds a whole new layer to it of beauty. So in there, I was doing like a, a little bit of the uh, listen to this Eddie solo and um, a little bit from Nebworth and a little bit of just the best I can. So the chords in the middle section are all major sevenths and minor sevenths and uh, they just make it sound so majestic. Um, D major seven. G major seven, E minor seven, I'm in drop D, so you gotta hold down the second fret.
D major 7, G major 7, C major 7. But around the solo, there's all these other guitars that kind of weave in and out. So I thought that that scrape there was a 12 string electric, but when I went and tried it on the 12 string electric, it didn't sound anything like it. It was missing something. And then as I listened further into the song and I heard when it comes back in, there's a guitar that's just going. sounds like an electric sitar. And then when I, I backed up, I realized that this part, it sounds like that's done with a, an electric sitar. And it just hits the spot as a sitar will do. Probably the hardest part of the solo is this. Because it's so much movement and sliding and you gotta be holding everything down as you're going back and forth up the neck. You can hear that Paige kind of flubs that in the uh, listen to this Eddie, but every time he flubs something, it's always like my favorite part of that solo. And then all these different harmonies start coming out. It's kind of cool and fascinating how many guitars he can layer in there without it sounding cluttered. So many different things going on. And then in the live version, he adds another solo onto the end. So the, the album version while that's going on, there's a whole nother part. So you got a, a half step bend in there that you can't really do on the B bender unless you're super precise. Right here. And of course, that's got a harmony on it too. So, but on the live version, you get a whole nother solo at the end where Paige just kind of goes crazy and bends every note that he can find.
All right, thanks for checking this out. 10 Years Gone by Led Zeppelin with the B-Bender. I'm your host, Fran Capitanelli, totally into the sound. Don't forget to subscribe. We're almost there to 1,000. I'm past the halfway point. This was a big week, and we'll see you next time.